Hurricane watches and warnings have been posted along a large section of the central Gulf Coast. Traffic is jammed as people are trying to get out of town. Sorry to come in from Mississippi and Louisiana. Do we have resources? 305. Officials estimate that 80% of New Orleans is now underwater. It is very much a city under sea. It sounds as if the roof is starting to peel off the Superdome. Oh, uh, I didn't have no other place to go, really. Didn't think it would be this bad. A public health emergency has been declared along the Gulf Coast. Water everywhere, up to the roof, up to the ceiling. There were many people still trapped. The first firefighters went to houses, got people out. We have no power, no water. We don't have fuel to operate our generators. Miles still await evacuation, and along with water, fire now threatens New Orleans. There are firefighters here, brave individuals coming into this area. Seas and fixers. The first firefighters, uh, well, all the firefighters, uh, they have to stay during the storm. So they was quartered in different areas. And when the when the flood was come, the flood started with the wave coming through and the hurricane wind started coming. They was kind of isolated from each other. All, all the IFF members are, are supporting us now. And everywhere I've been, firemen have their hands out to us. People around the state do, around the country. And it's a great deal. And I think as long as they keep supporting us until we get back on our feet, we'll be all right. Let me open up with some statements right on the front end of this unbelievable disaster that we're all a part of. And what I need to do is to hear from you exactly what you were faced with. We need to have a clear view on what your operations looked like, what, to what extent you had operations in those critical first few days where it is absolutely clear that you did receive the kind of resource and help uh, from government that should have been in place. It was hell for the first few days, quite frankly, it was hell. The location I was at probably had 12 foot of water in it. There were only like four structures left standing on the beach. Looked like a uh, bomb was dropped and just leveled out people's homes. We had tremendous tree damage, power lines, power poles. We had very little communications. The further you went down, the less communications you had. Two blocks before Veterans Boulevard, all the way north to the lake was flooded. One of our roll-up doors actually blew all the way through the station. We had no power. We had no generators. We were unable to get fuel for our trucks. There was no <clears throat> communications whatsoever. Uh, cell phones went out. The power is out, was out at most of our 21 stations. Only two stations had operating generators. My boat was almost hijacked. We had to put guns in people's face, literally. Today, rescue teams searched house to house. The county EOC flooded and all the 9-11 system was out. All the area hospitals around that shut down and, and we're, we're taking no patients. We had a couple of structure fires in the area we couldn't do anything about, you know, which was kind of kind of helpless feeling. AMR, private ambulance service, um, they stopped responding. Probably 70 percent of our city, uh, you couldn't go any further than two or three city blocks. We encountered residents who said, I've got gas lines that are blowing. Uh, we attempted to try to control those gas lines we knew about. As soon as the storm was over with, first thing we did was we cleared a path for the power company so they could get the trucks in and out. We had uh, firefighters working until 2, 3 in the morning doing uh, uh, water rescue. We started with the boat lift operation. Half our boats went and got food and water from wherever, and the other half went and rescued people. Our people were still rescuing people off the roofs while other parish residents were coming into the drier areas not even knowing that this situation was going on. Many are asking what took so long. There was no planning and no training for if and when those radio communications went out. Certainly the plan started falling apart uh, even before the storm made landfall. Went to the upper command staff approximately 11 o'clock that morning and asked them what the plan was. Uh, wasn't, wasn't a plan. They couldn't find 
our fire chief at first. Didn't answer the radio, didn't answer the telephone, didn't know where he was at. We had trouble with looters in daytime and nighttime. We were just bombarded with all the military, you know, choppers and planes. It's great when people send you a lot of help, but they don't develop infrastructure to take care of those people. As far as FEMA was concerned, they were nowhere to be found. The first direct contact we've had with FEMA was yesterday. A FEMA guy was been sleep has been sleeping out of his truck for the past few nights. He came by the station and said, do you mind if we use your shower? And we gave him a place to stay. The first contact with FEMA that we had, we actually were going to acquire a, a shipment of fuel. They rerouted our shipment of fuel. Someone spoke with uh, FEMA probably the sixth day after the storm. FEMA didn't show up until about two days ago. Thank goodness that we could come together so quickly and start taking care of our own because it seems as though uh, we were kind of left out on our own. Uh, as far as with federal help, state help, to local government help in a lot of cases. Here right now, I guess, uh, the unknown. A lot of us don't know what's going to happen if we'll have a, be able to recover from this. But I really want to make sure that this international union is focused on a core of missions that take care of the needs of our members and our families. My family was my biggest concern. Out of 30, 35,000 homes, there's not one livable home in our parish. We have probably about 180 firefighters in Biloxi, and I think 23 uh, lost everything. I think we had three members who was totally wiped out. We had uh, 14 members had total loss of residents. We have about 38 uh, engine houses, all of which had to be abandoned. The help from all the brother firefighters has been tremendous. What the International has done for, for the members of our local, I mean, they, it, you can't explain it. Nothing was coming, and we just, the, the firefighters took it upon themselves to get them out, and they did a good job. By sundown, we had four brother firefighters from Cleveland, Tennessee, with a truck and trailer loaded with water and ice and drinks and food. And they've been coming in, they've been assisting us on, <clears throat> on rolls, they've been uh, teaming up and going to different firefighters' homes. They strictly were there to make sure we had stuff. Well, you know, the $500 didn't seem like much, but it helped. I'm thankful for the IAFF for the resources that you gave me to be able to operate out of Baton Rouge and sending the people in. Sometimes it's not what somebody does, it's just knowing and talking to them and knowing that they care enough to come help you and care about you or to say we're thinking about you. It helps us get through it to know that, you know, we've got the good people of the International and then other people that are, you know, worried about us and concerned about us and, and helping us. We appreciate it. I have to say the IFF stepped up to the plate uh, big time. Mm -hmm.